dumb does that sound? He got me. That's when I wrote the book. In other words, I was affiliated with so much money back when I was in high school that the money that I was making, I messed up so many lives following me. And I owe my community. That's why I reach out. That's why I'm in the streets. That's why I'm bringing forth information. But this is not the kind of information you force on people because the drugs is something that a lot of them are used to and it's easy, fast money. And when you get that type of money, it's hard to break away and go look for a job that pay you seven or eight dollars mm -hmm. when you can make seven or eight hundred mm -hmm. in an hour. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying about that is that it's, it's time for the information to get to the streets because the word did say, I saw it in the book, it says, go home and tell your friends what I have done for you mm -hmm. and how I have had compassion on you. A lot of people are afraid. See, when I went to church, I went to church with drugs. I did drugs in church because I heard someone say, come as you are. He would accept you just as you are. What that meant to me is that I had to triumph for myself. So I came to church one day and in the midst of being amongst all those people who were looking good, had on the dress clothes and I had on a suit, but I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. I used to go in the bathroom every Sunday that I went and pull out my drugs. And one day mm -hmm. I heard someone say, just a little talk with Jesus mm -hmm. will make everything all right. So I went in the bathroom and I was tired of going to church and I thought I'd have a talk with him. And I said, God, I'm tired of coming in this church disrespecting you. Mm -hmm. But I heard a voice say you're in the right place. Mm -hmm. So I snorted my drawers and went back in there and sat down. The moral of the story, they say it may not come when you want him, mm -hmm. but he's always it's on time. time. I went to him in 1990. He knew I couldn't handle change too fast. So he allowed me to stay coming until 1992, January 31st. I've been delivered for 24 years, and I'm just grateful to be able to be a help to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bishop Campbell, close us out over the ne next two minutes here. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Haney, um, you know, I always say there's a root to every problem. Uh, we took uh, our juveniles and decided to take them to TSU to see a college game. They have never seen a college game a day in their life. These are the same young men from the age of 13 to 18. Their main goal is just to live to see 21. Mm -hmm. Because of one idea to take them to a college game, at the end of it, I asked them, did you enjoy yourself? They said, Bishop, now you make us want to go to college. Mm -hmm. We got to just step out there. If we don't take care of our, our, our kids, nobody else will. We don't even get funded for game. We pay this out of our own pocket. And I said, I can't wait for somebody to give me some money when our kids are dying every day on the street. Uh, and so I agree with Pastor Walker. I agree with uh, Ricky Waller. Ricky Waller, actually, to be on the set, we didn't know we was going to be together, but I used to look up to him. He was the reason why I was on the street, but to just see what God can do to you and to see we fighting the same battle on the, on the side of the Lord down the line uh, so that there is some hope in our communities. Amen. Well, I, I can only say that uh, I think that this has been a very, very profitable and, and, and a very informative situation to have uh, three churchmen to talk about the situation in which uh, we might be able to overcome some of the challenges that face uh, some of the African-American youth today. I think that we've been involved, all of us have been involved with this yeah. for the last 20, 25 years. I know we've yeah. been involved for the last 25 years mm -hmm. on this particular yeah. show, yeah. and it still seems to be a growing problem. But mm -hmm. I think that the more that uh, we can uh, get the information, I think Brother Waller is correct in terms of getting the information out, what you can do yes. with what you have. Yes. And so I want to thank the three of you for coming by and giving yes. us that excellent information. And let me encourage our audience thank to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and
50 thousand videos on YouTube, Twitter, and sixty thousand. Thank you and welcome to the, the show today. The topic this morning is behind the public veil, the humanness of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And we're fortunate to have uh, with us to uh, talk about the uh, humanness of uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, Dr. Lewis Baldwin. And of course, Dr. Baldwin, let me uh, welcome you to the uh, show to today and to uh, tell you how delighted we are and to uh, tell you that we're happy to be able to deal with another of your many, <laughs> many books. I think that uh, you've you. been Thank with you. us uh, over the last 25 or 30 years, Dr. Uh, Baldwin. It's been quite an and, honor. And Thank every you. time you come in, you bring a book with you. Yeah. You see, you've got so many books. I'm that, thankful that, for that. That's and and, and you've made a very, very important contribution to the life and times of Dr. Martin Luther King. Thank and you uh, so what much. you have here, I think, will give us an opportunity to see Martin Luther King from an entirely different perspective That's right. than the Dr. Martin Luther King that you've, you, you've presented to us because you've talked about his assassination. That's you've right. talked about his trials and his tribulations and That's Martin Luther right. King this and Martin Luther King that. And yes. we're just delighted to have you here, Dr. Martin. Thank Baldwin. you so much. And, it's always an honor. And let us have uh, you to give us some statements during this first segment in reference to who you are are and then get into uh, talking about uh, Dr. Okay. Martin Luther King and why you wrote this book okay. uh, Behind the Veil. Okay, I grew up in the Alabama Black Belt in Camden, Alabama, Wilcox County, Alabama in the late 40s, 50s, uh, during the days of segregation. So I was exposed to segregation. I uh, attended segregated schools, graduated from Camden Academy High School in 